to QLab. In today's video, we're going to be exploring electrolysis and building an electrolytic cell using everyday objects. If you want to follow along, all the materials you'll need are in the description box. First, we need to consider what electrolysis is. So let's have a look at the word electrolysis. Well, we can split it into electro, using electricity, and lysis to break something down, though the original Greek actually meant to loosen, but we use it in science to mean to break something apart. However, I prefer the idea of thinking resulting in chemical change, because electrolysis doesn't always lead to things breaking down. So I want to set a bit of context of electrolysis, and we can have a look at the reactivity series. And if you can remember, this is where you had potassium, right up at the top is most reactive, all the way down to gold, the least reactive at the bottom there. And if I had some copper oxide, well, one way that I can reduce it or extract the copper metal from it is by reacting it with something like hydrogen or carbon, just like this. You have the hydrogen giving you water and the copper metal, or carbon, where you get carbon dioxide, and the copper metal. So let's just focus in on the copper here, where you have copper 2 plus going to copper metal. But what really has to happen here? Well, for that 2 plus to go away, we have to add something negative. So that would be 2 electrons. So copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons goes to copper metal. And sometimes people like to put a little zero like that next to the metal. But that's not really necessary. If there's no number written up there, people assume it's zero. So the hydrogen or carbon are acting as electron donors because they're donating electrons to the copper 2 plus here in order for it to become copper. Now the copper 2 plus, don't forget, it's come from the fact that oxygen is 2 minus, and so the copper for the overall species to be neutral has to be 2 plus. And in fact, the whole reactivity series is just a measure of how available electrons are. So copper, silver and gold, well they, they really don't want to give up electrons. Those electrons are not very available. But potassium, sodium or calcium... Those outer shell electrons are really available. But there's a problem here. Because we can use hydrogen and carbon to get out things like zinc, iron or copper. What about things that are more likely to give up an electron than carbon? How do we extract those like magnesium? from magnesium oxide. So what do you think? Well, the trick's in the topic. If we use hydrogen, we get no reaction. If we use carbon, no reaction. So it would be great if we could just donate electrons directly to the magnesium 2 plus, wouldn't it? And we can achieve that with electrolysis. Now one of the key and very important things for electrolysis is that we have to separate species or compounds into their ions. And what that means is separate something like magnesium oxide into magnesium 2 plus and oxygen 2 minus. So how can we do that? Well there are two key ways. One, or the first one we'll have a look at, is dissolving, where we can put something like sodium chloride in solution and it dissolves. And we can write that as a chemical formula, like I'm showing here. Sometimes people like to put water over the arrow, but the reason we don't want to put water, sorry, plus water, is because we don't know how many waters are involved. It's just excess water. But note that AQ in the subscript next to sodium plus and chloride minus showing that it's aqueous and another way is by heating 
the salt itself. So if we heat up sodium chloride really hot, it'll dissolve. Oh, sorry, it won't dissolve, it'll melt. And so we have liquid sodium chloride. And we can write that like this. Well, we now have liquid sodium plus and liquid chloride minus. And in both these cases, in solutions and in melts, the ions are free to move around. And because they have charge, if you remember from physics, that means they can conduct electricity because you have a charged particle moving. And we call these solutions electrolytes because they can carry or conduct electricity. So how do we make an electrolytic cell from this? Well, we could take our solution of sodium chloride and you just put in two conducting objects such as graphite or even iron and we attach it up to a battery. And there we go, we have an electrolytic cell. And you can imagine that perhaps the uh, piece of material, conducting material, that's attached to the positive end of the battery and the piece of conducting material that's attached to the negative end of the battery, well, they might behave differently. But before we go further, it's time we made one. So here we've got the equipment we need to carry out the electrolysis. Oh, wait, I forgot a couple of pegs. There's some pegs as well, two pegs. So we need battery, some pencils, two pegs, some wires, and a bottle. Let's start off with the bottle. Now with this bottle, it's just a big one and some squash. I'm just going to cut it down because all I want is a little container to hold our electrolyte. So our water solution. So I'm going to use just a garden pruning knife. And I'm going to cut the bottle along one of these little lines. Now, as always, be very careful when you're handling anything sharp. You can do this with scissors as well, though it's a little bit harder, I find, with scissors. And remember, we have two little pencils, and you're going to need this to do two of your pencils as well, because what we're going to use is the graphite in pencils as our electrode. Because that graphite, that's a carbon electrode. Now, we're going to want to check that there's no broken um, graphite in this pencil. So we're going to have to make sure that they conduct through the pencil. There's a very easy way to do that. Now, if you've got a multimeter at home, you won't need to do something like this. But this is effectively just a slightly fancier little setup. I've got a battery. There's my positive terminal. So I put on the positive. Now, I don't have a little light bulb. But what I do have is some LEDs. So I've just put a little resistor on this breadboard, that's something to help us build circuits, so that it can protect uh, this LED. So I've attached it to one end there. Now, that then runs through to the positive end of my LED. And then I just complete that circuit there. And if I attach this up to the negative end here on the battery, you'll see the blue LED light up like that. Super simple. So, if I then put ooh, a clip on that, what I can do is take a pencil like this and I can just touch this to either end and see if the LED lights up to complete the circuit. There. So I know, ooh, ah, I know there's no broken graphite in that pencil because it can conduct all the way through. I can do the same on this one. Lovely. So we know that both these pencils are absolutely fine. So if we take our pencils and their clips, we can attach these into this little pot. And what I'm going to use is the short pencil. That's going to be a negative electrode. And this, you'll find out why it's important for us to remember which one's which in a little bit. This, a longer one, that can be our positive electrode. We'll try and do it so that we can see what's going on. 
there. So you can see they're just clipped in on either side in there. And now we can add some water. So let's add the water. And we want to cover the ends of those pencils. Could do with adding a little bit more water. So I've just moved the pencils around a little bit so that we can see them clearly from the front. Now, if we had just wanted to finish building this electrode, well, all we'd have to do, and I said I wanted this to be negative and that to be positive, that's my negative end on the battery. So what I'd do is I'd just attach that to that end of the pencil, and then I'd use one more to attach from that to that end. But I want us to see something a little bit more than just that this time. I want us to see that we have a full circuit. So what I'm going to do is connect these up. I'm going to connect this up so that we can see this LED light up if we have a complete circuit. So that's going to go to the positive and then I'm going to go from the negative end, uh, sorry, the positive end this chap through to this pencil end here and you can see the LEDs lit up so we now have a completed circuit. So that means that we have electricity and it's traveling to here through this little resistor, through the little resistor here, lighting this LED. It's going up through into this pencil, through the graphite, then through our solution, up that pencil and back out round to the battery on this side. So we know we've got a completed circuit because this LED is lit up. So now let's make it a lot simpler and we'll remove this little uh, light that tells us that the circuit is complete. So we'll break the circuit. There we go. And then we'll take this off here Ooh. so that we can remove this entire piece. And what we can do is we can just simply connect this lead up to the other side and now Back to having a complete circuit again. And there's something I'm going to try and home in on so that you can see it really clearly. Now you should be able to see there are lots of bubbles coming off both of these terminals, both of these electrodes. Sorry. And that's very important because what's happening is that the, elec the electricity being provided is resulting in electrolysis and that's where compounds and chemicals are altered by the conditions we're providing and so in this solution at the minute we've got water so we have some OH minus ions and some H plus ions not many and then because I added a little bit of salt we have some sodium plus ions and chloride minus ions and we'll explore in a later video how we can predict and see what comes off each of these electrodes. I hope you enjoyed this one. In the next video we'll be looking at how we can use electrolysis to prove that water is in fact H2O. If you like this video why not have a look at some of our others like from eggs to crystals where we make calcium acetate, or where we extract a pH indicator from red cabbage. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.